How would you like to compose videos with Dart code? Well, as of today, you can. Howdy, I'm Matt, Chief of the Flutter Bounty Hunters, and we're a remote development agency dedicated to building open source Flutter and Dart packages. Today, I'd like to tell you about one of those packages called FFmpeg CLI. Let's go have a look. FFmpeg CLI is a pure Dart package. This one doesn't involve any Flutter code. It's a pure Dart package that wraps or replicates FFmpeg command line arguments and structures in Dart code so that you can write Dart code that composes and produces videos. Now you can see here that version 010 is available on Pub currently, and that is what we call a proof of concept release. Rather than go around talking to companies about ideas that we have for projects and packages that we could build, we believe that whenever possible, we should just build a small version of the package, demonstrate the value, show you that we can do the job, and then see if any companies out there would like to fund further development. So that's what we've done here with FFmpeg CLI. Today, we will write just enough code to compose perhaps the simplest video possible just to show you that it works. But you should know that every video on the Flutter Bounty Hunters channel, as well as every video on the Super Declarative channel, were all rendered using FFmpeg CLI. It doesn't have all the filters and capabilities that FFmpeg offers at the actual command line, but it's been enough to compose all of those videos. So let's go take a look at what it looks like to compose a simple video using FFmpeg CLI with Dart code. Here in the IDE, I have a new Dart project. We are currently sitting in main.dart. I have a little bit of code here that's commented out. We'll talk about that later. This is actually just about process communication. It's not about the FFmpeg part. But you'll notice here under assets that I have two videos, a welcome and then or an opener and then a welcome. The opener, I'll just go ahead and play these for you. The opener is the standard opener for Flutter Bounty Hunters videos. And then the welcome is an actual recording for the video that is currently operating as the welcome video when someone who's not subscribed to the channel opens up the Flutter Bounty Hunters channel. Let's take a look. Probably looks very similar, same overlay to what you see on this video. What we'd like to do is take the opener and stitch it with the welcome video so that we have one after the other. Start with the opener, then go to the content video, which is roughly how all of these videos across the Flutter Bounty Hunters channel and the Super Declarative channel are actually stitched together and rendered. We'd like to do that from Dart code so that we don't have to assemble this rather complicated and difficult to understand filter graph at a terminal. So let's go ahead and figure out what we can write using this package. I should also point out before we begin that right here, we do have FFmpeg CLI 010 as a dependency for this project, which gives us access to the package that we're talking about. Let me get rid of some of these extraneous files. Come back to main. Let's see if we can build this together. Our goal is to create an FFmpeg command that we can run. To create the command, we could list everything out, all the arguments for that command directly, but there's a tool that we provide in FFmpeg CLI that makes it a little bit easier, and it's called an FFmpeg builder. So let's start there. What this builder allows us to do is accumulate inputs like videos and images. It allows us to assemble filter chains for the filter graph, and it allows us to establish what the output stream is called, which we'll need to reference in the actual FFmpeg command. This is a good opportunity for me to point out that this package is intended to reflect how the actual FFmpeg CLI works. If you were to sit down and type all that stuff out in a terminal, it would look the same as what you see here in terms of 
the fact that we have, again, inputs, a filter graph, and outputs. What we gain by doing this in Dart is that you have compile time safety. So any filter, any stream, those are actually variables or properties. So you can avoid a lot of really easy mistakes. You also gain the ability to work with times in a much easier way. If you were to sit down and type out the timestamps at the terminal, it's really easy to get those timestamps messed up. It's also really difficult to add and subtract time when you're writing in the terminal. You have to actually create an entire subshell to run basic mathematics. But in Dart, we have durations, and it's really easy to add and subtract durations to and from one another. So everything that you do to assemble that final command is made much easier by doing it with Dart. Now, there will be another package coming in the near future that will add a layer on top of all this FFmpeg CLI stuff and make things a lot more compositional, and it will avoid a lot of the complexities of the FFmpeg filter graph. But if you are someone who understands how FFmpeg works, then you will understand the concepts we are working with here. Let's go ahead and build this and see what it looks like. Again, our goal is to take these two videos as inputs, stitch them together into one, render that as output. With the builder, we can say builder add asset. Okay, we have two assets. We had two videos coming in as assets. We will say assets, flutter, bounty, hunters, opener, MP4, and builder add asset, assets, bounties, welcome, MKV. Now, when we add an asset, FFmpeg automatically assigns a particular stream ID. It, it typically looks something, you know, for an asset, it'll, it'll look like this. It'll be for the video stream, it'll be like zero colon V. Otherwise, it'll be zero colon A. Those are the two streams that become available from the very first asset that you pass in. The second asset would then have something like 1V and 1A. You can see that the, num the first number keeps incrementing for every asset. V for video, A for audio. If one of these assets only had a video signal without any audio, then you would just get this part right here, the 1V. If it was an audio file, like music, for example, then you would just end up with 1A. One of the nice things about using this builder is that it already understands these names. And what it does is it returns to us <clears throat> a stream. And that's this isn't this isn't a dart stream. This is just the ID for the asset stream. This is the 0v and 0a that I just showed you. But it this the package keeps track of that inside of this opener stream property. And we can also then get the well, it was for ease of understanding, we'll call it the content stream. We get a content stream. If we want to work with these assets, we need to reference these streams, which is why they're returned to us and it's why we store them. Now, what do we want to do with these streams? Well, we want to put them together. And another word for putting them together is concatenate or concat. There is a filter available to us called concat, which will put multiple videos or audio together depending on your needs. To accomplish that with our package, we will say builder, add filter chain. Now a filter chain can contain multiple filters. Let me make sure I'm getting the right argument here. Okay, sorry, I went for a list. It's actually a filter chain object. Filter chain. Inputs, filters, outputs. It's called a chain because a filter chain can actually have multiple filters. One, two, five. It, it, it'll just pass your streams through as many filters as you pass into the filters property. But in this case, we only need one filter, the concat filter. So first, let me stub these out and then we'll come back and fill them in. This is the structure we're going for. Now, what are the inputs? What are we concatenating together? Well, we're concatenating the opener with the content. 
And order matters here because this is the order that the streams will be passed into the filters. And what did we say we wanted to do? We wanted to concatenate them. Now, here again, this package reflects the actual options available on the command line. And if you were to actually write out this big uh, CLI command yourself, the concat filter would ask you to tell it how many segments you're bringing together. Even though that we can, we can obviously compute that, we can tell that there are two input segments. But for whatever reason, FFmpeg says you must tell us how many segments. And so we, and that is replicated in the Dart code because we want to reflect what's actually happening on the command line. So we have two segments in this case. Now, how many output video streams? Well, just one because we're putting, we're turning two into one. How many audio streams? Again, just one. That filter will now accomplish putting those two things together, two streams into one, one video, one audio coming out. But we also have to tell the filter the name of the output stream. So we actually have to have an output stream ready to go to send the result into, which means we need to create that. Luckily, the builder makes that easy as well. We'll call up, call it output stream and say builder create stream. That just creates essentially a placeholder ID for a stream that we use somewhere in this filter graph. And now for the outputs, we will simply say output stream. So two streams going in, opener and content. And then the output is just one output stream, which includes one video stream and one audio stream within the output stream. We have now assembled the filter graph. We now need to marshal that into the actual FFmpeg command that we're going to run. We can say FFmpeg command equals FFmpeg command. It takes a, a filter graph and an output file path. It also takes args, which we're going to need. We'll do that in a moment. The filter graph, actually, I'm sorry. So um, this the, the builder is even more useful than I remembered. It has a build method that will actually generate this command. We'll still have to pass it the args, but we can say builder.build, and then it wants args and output. So the output file path is easy. We'll say out assets generated video.mp4. And for the arguments, there are a few things we need here. I'm actually going to copy them from a different file that already has them. So I'll explain them in just a second. Ignore what you're seeing here. But I always forget these arguments. The first argument here sets the logging level for FFmpeg so that we can see all the stuff that it's doing, or at least most of the stuff, the info level. Now, these next two arguments are critical. The logging, not critical, but these mappings are critical. Even though we created this filter graph that has an eventual output, we have to explicitly tell FFmpeg which stream actually goes to this file. FFmpeg is not going to infer that for, for us. And so we explicitly say map the video, this, this particular video stream, output stream.video and map output stream.audio. These two arguments right here will accomplish our goal of sending that output to this generated video.mp4 file. And lastly, this argument called vsync with a value of two, this is just, I did a lot of experimentation with FFmpeg at the CLI to build this package. I forget the specific reason that this is here, but there are cases where without this vsync configuration, things go awry. So at least for me, I always include this. At some point, I'll come back and document why it's there and when you need it. But just keep in mind that if you run without this, this final CLI arg here, you may not get the results that you expect. But let's recap. With the builder, we tell it to build. We tell it the argument, the FFmpeg arguments that we want to use for the command. And we tell it the output file path for the file that we want to generate. And now we want to run this command. So we will say 
FFmpeg, instantiate one of those, and we will say run, and we will pass in the FFmpeg command. Now, what does run give us? Run returns a future process. So it gives us a process if we await. Let's do that. Let's say await, and let's say final process equals. Now, this process concept is a generic Dart concept. This is exactly what you would expect from like an operating system standpoint. This is a, an execution process. But this is now why I have this extra code down here commented out. First, we want to be able to see the output from FFmpeg in our terminal right here. That requires a little bit of extra work. We also want to be able to type things to FFmpeg. For example, if you ever generate a video that already exists, FFmpeg is going to say, wait a second, it already exists. Do you want to overwrite it? We want the ability to type yes in our own terminal. Both of those goals require this little bit of additional code. I'll uncomment it. First, we take the process, we grab standard error, which I don't know, for some reason seems to include all output, and we transform it. I'll need to import this. We'll transform it as UTF-8 characters, and then we just print that stuff out to our usual Dart terminal or console. But then also we want to be able to respond. So we take process.standard in, and we pipe that to the standard Dart IO standard in, which will be this area down here. And then finally, we return the exit code from the process. This would be useful if, for example, you had other things listening for the end of this script and you wanted to do something based on success or failure. But this should now generate the video that we're looking for. Again, very quickly, we create the builder. We declare a stream for the opener asset video. We declare a stream for the content video. We declare an empty stream for the output. And then we set up this single filter chain with a single concatenation filter for the chain. We turn the two asset streams into a single output stream, and then we create and run the command. Let's actually see if this works. Notice again under assets, we only have two videos here right now. Let me say dart bin main.dart. This will run our main file. Let's see what happens. All right, all this is output from FFmpeg, and you can see that it's generating the file right now. The time in the file, bit rate, all this stuff is output from FFmpeg. Now that welcome file, that welcome video is like a minute or something long, so we should see this get to, I don't know, anywhere from 60 to 90 seconds, and then the rendering should be complete. Almost there. All right, and now it's done. Execution is over. Come up here to assets. And there's generated video MP4. Let's open that up. What are we expecting? We're expecting the opener followed by an untrimmed welcome message. So the beginning of the welcome message is going to be garbage time, but we're not going to worry about trimming this down. So here's the video. We'll press play. There's the opener. And there's me getting ready to speak at the beginning of the video. So there you go. With Dart code, we have stitched together a video. Now this can get quite a bit more complicated. If you look at the super declarative channel, you'll notice a few things. First, all of the outros on the super declarative channel slightly overlap the content. The audio begins before the content ends. And then there is an animation where like a piece of paper actually swipes over the content video. That means that the two videos have some overlap. That's not just concatenation. That's a different filter entirely, a different setup. Also, those videos have overlays applied to them. There's actually images placed on top of the content, 
which is used to show, for example, a logo or a little subscribe animation. So there's more going on there, but it's all still rendered with the same tool that you see here. Again, this is FFmpeg CLI. And if your team or your company would find it valuable for us to add more filters and expand the functionality in this package, please do reach out to the Flutter Bounty Hunters. You can find us at Flutter Bounties on Twitter. You can also find us at flutterbountyhunters.com. Let us know that you would like to fund a milestone and we'll start to build this project up into something that is production ready with the help from companies like yours. So I hope you enjoy what we've built here. I hope we can build an even bigger and better project together. And y'all come back now, you hear?